right, and we're back. So now it's time for some white wolves. And we're going to do a couple different methods for this. So first we're going to talk about an, a sort of an icy wolf, you know, kind of more bluish in tint, very cold white. And with this one, we're going to do him in just more of a traditional black and white, although we're still going to work a little color in. Okay, so where do we start? Well, I'm glad you asked. So the first place we're going to start is in a, a blue... I'm going to do this on both of them because I do want a little bit of color in this guy as well. I'm going to start with this glacier blue. Again, um, this is, I think, like Fenrisian gray or something in Citadel, but, you know, some kind of, like, very light blue-gray. That's where you want to start. So again, let's knock some of this out on our palette here. And going to get our old friend the dry brush. Again, we're doing all this with two brushes, and they are not great brushes. Look how crappy that thing is. Garbage. We're going to paint these guys, and they're going to look they're going to look good. Solid good. That's what our goal is here. Okay. So again, we're going to work that into the bristles. Make sure all our extras off there. We don't want to we don't want to kill the model with it. All right. Let's get this guy. What are we going to do? Same thing. We're just going to trace him again all over. We're just dry brushing this all over him. Now, on the blue, because blue is our undercolor here, we're going to want to be a little heavier with the dry brush than we might otherwise be. Because the reality is, we don't want a blue wolf. I'm not trying to actually do a blue wolf here. The blue is just my undertone. So... What we're going to actually do is do this a couple times, okay, until we've more or less blown away all of the, the, the blue except for the lower parts. Even to the point where we're going to just lightly dry brush the, the base of the thing, like the, the flat skin, quite a bit. So we're going to do a heavier dry brush. That's another thing, like, dry brushing isn't necessarily one setting. There can be very light dry brushing where you just very lightly touch and apply some color. There can be very heavy dry brushing where you really... You really work it in there. And that's what we're doing here. We're doing a very heavy dry brush. Doesn't necessarily mean you have more paint on the bristles at any given point in time, although it can. Okay. So again, we're just giving him a nice coat. Getting all over there. Now we've got all the zenithal and everything working for us, creating our undertones. That's why we do that undershading, because it does so much work for us, right? When we get to this stage, we've already got a bunch of nice shades and tonal variants in there because of everything we did before. That's why we underpaint all that stuff. Okay. So... pretty solid. I think it's about where we want to be. You can see now he looks much more white. Tell you what, let's just do that a little bit more. As he's starting to, that, that Fenrisian, or that uh, glacier blue is starting to win. It's really a very white color. It's called blue, but it's really not. In this case, I'm just kind of going a little nuts. We're going to get nuts on him. Should we get that fur down there in the scruff of his neck? Everywhere where he's got some space hiding. Okay. So, there's that guy. Now we, we you can see we blew away most of the blue. Perfect. Alright. We do the same thing on this one. While I've got that on there. Again, this time, we went from very blue and that looked white. On this guy, it's going to look a little more blue because this guy has no other color in him right now. He's just zenithal, basically. Like, that's where we started with him. He has no other thing applied to him beyond that zenithal. So what we're doing at this point is just picking everything out. Okay. We don't have to be as heavy on him. We can go a little lighter because we're going to go... We're going to take some more steps with him. We 
get a nice coat all there. Don't miss his little feetsies. We get everything. Okay. So, now here's our two wolves. Here's how they're looking. Starting to come along. All right. So, with this guy, with this one, right, ultimately what we want to aim at with this guy is we want our sort of, like, how I, I see this working out is I want the fur to be mostly white, and I'm going to take the body and I'm going to tint it just very lightly blue. So that's how we're going to work him, okay? Because this guy has skin. Now, again, if you had a full wolf with all fur, maybe you don't do that, you can work however it is. These guys are interesting because they have this flat surface in here. But when you map this mix, you want to have some kind of contrast there, okay? Um, to make the fur stand out from the rest of the model, and that's true sort of in general. Um, whenever you're dealing with fur, on any models, be they a beast man or anything, you want there to be a difference between what the fur is and what the the actual skin tone is, or whatever it is for that case. Okay, so now I'm going to go into uh, we're going to go into some straight dead white, just good old like literally dead white. That's what it's called. Okay. Let's get some of that out on our palette there. Got like 80 paints out here. It's fine. Didn't wash. Didn't wipe my brush. Didn't clean it. Just going straight into the white. Okay. Now, same thing again. We're gonna go overboard just a little on this. That's intentional. If this was all just fur, this would be a lot easier. Since we got the skin, it gets a little more fun. Okay, great. Now we're not making a huge difference there. Even though on my, you can see on my paper towel, look how different those two colors look. That's the white. That's the glacier blue. But on the model, with that undertone, you can't really tell as much. Okay? All right. Now on this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to focus more on the top with those lighter colors. So we're just hitting, like, especially the high fur. Okay. All right. So, what do we got? We've got our two wolves. Neither of them are looking too great yet, but we're getting somewhere. Again. So now we're going to go ahead and clean off our brush. Let's start with Blue Boy here. Okay, so what I'm going to do with him is actually take some of that glacier blue. I'm going to actually thin it out here with the brush I'm using to apply washes. I'm going to thin it way down. I'm literally just going to run it over the rest of the model very quickly. I'm being purposely kind of rough with this. But what I'm trying to do here is just put a little bit of quick paint on this guy. Not getting all the areas, just working in a very thin, it's it's not really a glaze because it's moving the color too much to be a glaze, as you can see there, but it's just a light touch. But what I want to do is smooth out some of that tone. I want to just smooth out some of that okay good so now that we got that done again it's not perfect I don't need perfect that's not what I'm looking for here we'll we'll get to that we'll, we'll keep move, pushing it along every one of these steps is fast. All right, so now what we're going to do with that one 
is we're going to take some of our Yeelman, Wheel. It's the Ultramarine guy, I think. I think that's who this guy is. I don't know. And uh, this four, we're going to take this 40k Blue Glaze, because I don't know whether, we're not totally sure who the name is referencing. Now this is a very thin paint. Like the glazes, if you've used them, are very light colors. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and work this just into the fur. So here now, we are being a little more careful. Again, it's still not, we're not doing anything too tricky. We're still just hitting the fur, that kind of thing. We're not going on super heavy. But we're also not going on super light. We're just applying it and pushing it around. And the goal here is we're trying to create that variation. Okay. So, now we're starting to get somewhere with our icy wolf. Right, he's starting to look nice and frozen. Yeah, looking good. All right, nice little frozen wolf coming along. Let's let that dry. We'll set that to the side. Over here, we're just gonna go for our gray wolf, right? Okay, so for our gray wolf, we're gonna get out our old friend, our Vallejo Model Wash Dark Gray. Um, you could use Nuln Oil in a pinch, for this, it has brown tones in it. I don't favor for this. Um, like, Nuln Oil is not truly a black wash. It has brown in it. Um, whereas this is just truly dark gray. Um, or you could thin out some, some, you know, German gray type of paint. Whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to take that I'm going to thin it down. Now, this goes on very black, but it dries nice and gray. So, with him, guess what? Boom right in there everywhere get in it just get in it that's right we are not being careful with this just time to sop it on we can let it gather in some places we don't want it to gather out on any like super flat surface or anything but down in the recesses of the fur and the eyes, yeah, sure, why not? We'll make our life easier later. Remember, this looks very black when it initially goes on, but it does dry a much nicer light gray. That's one of the reasons I like it so much. It's very visible when you put it on, makes it easy to work with, but it dries a nice lighter color. All right, so now, now we've got some nice variation there, okay? All right, so, we're gonna let both these guys dry, because again, gotta let them dry. Um, while I'm waiting, I'm probably gonna take my Glacier Blue and just go over, well, very thin down again, very quick with my wash. I'm just gonna go over this skin part again here, just kind of smooth it out. I'm just very quickly washing it in between doing these other steps. Uh, just kind of a slightly heavy glaze. I don't wanna blow away the blue underneath completely. I just wanna focus on like these highlights and very lightly touch it. I'm being purposefully messy, because in doing so, that creates the sort of random organic pattern we want. So, again, a few seconds for you, a few minutes for me. All right, everything's dry, and we're back. So you can see here, I just went ahead and smoothed out. I did a second layer of the gray just on this part of the wolf, like on the flat parts. Left the fur how it is. With this guy, we're going to do what we did in the other time, where we, we're going to go from dark to light. We'll do that with both these, actually, just in different ways. So you can go dark to light with this fur. You know, we, we, it's a cre the key, as I've said repeatedly, is creating a lot of layers. But you can create those different layers in a couple different ways. So there's a lot of like washing and dry brushing and washing and dry brushing back and forth. But you can also just sort of attack and smooth in different ways. So with this guy, what we're gonna do is, I've still got my white on my palette, my dead white, so I'm gonna get into some of that. And this time what I wanna do is just hit this fur. We really want to make this fur stand out from the rest of the uh, of the model here. Okay, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to use washes to basically bring that back to bring it into line. Okay? To do some interesting things with it. Okay. And then very lightly at the end, I'm just going to go over the face a little because I'm not happy with how like, there's not enough distinction right now in the face. So we're just going to very lightly hit that face. Just to create some more variation. Maybe a little on the top of the back. Again, while we're dry brushing, it's nice and quick. We're just being very light, very careful. Lots and lots of light repeated touches. Each time depositing very little paint. Okay. So now you can see we've got that fur looking pretty white. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go a little farther. We're we're not we're not there yet. Let's get more white on that brush. I want this I want this fur really popping. Except this time I'm gonna pull it down horizontally like this, and just mainly up at the top. White tends to go on brighter than it dries. That's one of the tricks. A lot of times when people paint white. They'll look at it and they'll be like, okay, that's perfectly bright, we're done. And then they then they wait, they walk away, they move to a different part of the model, they come back and they're like, oh, it's not as vibrant as it, went, as it was. What the heck happened? White dries darker than it goes on. You always got to be thinking about that. So, you know, the key with any white, whether it's fur or any layer, is you always want to, you know, do lots of layers of it to make it really be as white and vibrant as you want. Okay, put him to the side. Now... Actually, let's, let's stay on him for a minute. Okay. So, now I'm going to go ahead and clean my dry brush. Now, if you remember, I still had some of that dark gray on my palette, and I've still got some of that black ink on my palette. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create some color variation here throughout this fur using both of those things. So, I'm going to start with my dark gray, which was the thinner one. I'm going to just start dropping that in there. Okay. And here I'm almost stippling at it, pushing it down into the fur. Right? Sort of very much pushing it at the model, maybe dragging it over the fur, that kind of thing. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my black ink, which is a much stronger, darker tone. Get that nice and mixed up again. By the way, the longer stuff like this ink sits on your palette, the stronger it gets. Just because the water tends to evaporate, the pigment tends to remain. Now down at the bottom here, I'm going to work in the black ink. Okay. So basically, what I've done here is, in the lower parts of the fur, and I might want to trace like the muscles or his leg there, like put more here and here, so I create a natural separation, right? We're using the washes to create, you can see how that fur sticks out more. So we can use the washes to control that, create that sort of highlight difference. All right. So now what's happened is we go from this dark up to this light, right? I like that. Basically, we're going to let this guy dry, but he's almost done. Realistically, what we need to do from here to get him into shape is stuff to do with the skin, and that's not fur. Okay. We'll do one more step on him once he's all dry. Let's go back to Ice Wolf here. Got our Icy Wolf. So, what are we going to do with our Icy Wolf? All right, so first of all, you can see I smoothed out his skin palette. Again, this was not lengthy time. I just was grabbing it, and I'm kind of pushing some paint around. You can see it's not perfectly textured, and that's what I wanted. Again, I want that blue to show through. I want patchy. It's the idea of the thing. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some sky blue. This time we're going to do exactly the opposite of what we just did with the washes. We're going to go in the other direction. So... I'm going to take my sky blue, get it on my palette as soon as I clear the 
off of it. There we go. Happens sometimes. I'll openly admit I do not commonly use this color. Okay. Now, if you remember how we did it last time, we got a little on the side of our brush, wiped most of it off, almost like we're dry brushing, just not quite as hard. Test it there. And now what we're going to do down here is at the at a side angle. We're going to just lightly drag it over the model. We don't want a lot of paint on the brush. And we want to just lightly touch it. Okay? Okay. So we work that light blue in there, right? And that gives us, this is going to be our low tone on this, this light blue. Because again, we want this part, the body to be white. We want the blue to be, you know, mostly in the fur. So now we're going to go up from there into some of our glacier blue. Clean our brush here. We're going to go up into that glacier blue still on our palette. And now we're going to do the same thing, just at a higher up place. So and I'm going to overlap some. Again, just dragging to the side, not really dry brushing, just kind of wet brushing, I guess. Okay. Sometimes that can happen where you can kind of get at the wrong angle. It's okay. If it happens, no big deal. Final step, we're going to take some of our white. Where'd it go? There's our white. I would used all of it. Put some of that back on the palette. Okay. Now let's go ahead, get some of that white on the brush. Again, same thing. Now this time, we're going to just go right up top. So with the highest points, again, just to really work that out. We don't need to be too incredibly careful. And there we go. So now, we have the same sort of variation, right? But we did it through sort of a dry brush or a wet brush versus doing it through um, versus doing it through successive washes. However, if we felt like, you know, that really brought that in too white into the rest of it, then what we can do, we can take some of, go back to some of our glaze. That's right, folks. Have you noticed the secret to this? Oh, it's just the same thing over and over again. It's just the same thing back and forth until it gets to somewhere you like. You've, you've figured out the secret. That's right. That's all it is. So now we'll take it. I thin that blue a little. I'm just going to once again drag it in there. Tint that fur blue again, if that's what I want. If you want an almost bright white wolf that's very white all around, well, then just don't do this step. The point here, again, it's just mix to your heart's content. Just keep doing these steps over and over again until you're happy with how it looks. I think if I was going to go for an ice wolf, I'd probably just mix this a few more times. If I smooth out the head a little bit, you know, maybe work some of that blue glaze in there like that down underneath. Again, just look at creating some interesting color variation. Not really even being picky, right? But I think that looks pretty decent for our purposes today. Key is, again, how you can dry brush up or wash down. So, okay, that one's done. Let's go back to this guy. Again, most of what this guy needs is he needs his, his actual skin worked out in the same way I did with the other one. And I'm not going to do that on camera because this isn't about 
you know, doing skin tone, it's about doing the fur. So here we're going to do the same thing again, because what, what we want is a little more contrast. We've got our undertone nice and set, but we need to work that out. We need to work it out a little more with what's over top. Okay. So again, we're just going to side of the brush, side of the brush, side of the brush. Running against the angle, focusing more up top, side of the brush. Focusing more on those ridges or whatever that we want to be very well called out, such as over the top of his leg. There, right? So there we go. And now we've got a nice contrasty white fur. This guy's still probably too just gray and black and white. We need to work some more tones in. But I think that more or less shows you what we need to do with the fur. All right, so that's our icy wolf and our gray wolf. There we go. Um, probably I would work some darker tones in here on the, on the flat part if we are gonna go all the way. So let's set these guys to the side. Let's just jump right into our last two wolves. Okay. So these two are opposite zenithal highlighted, right? And I'm going to do both of them as black wolves. Very straightforward. We're going to do some black fur. Okay. How do we do that? Well, surprisingly, it's not start by painting black. Okay because that is going to go down a, a not great road. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with just the fur. So I'm gonna get into my dry brush. I remember I've got a little of that sky blue and white on my palette. Okay, I'm gonna touch that white, I'm gonna touch that sky blue. I wanna create something even lighter than those two. Or lighter than the sky blue, I should say. Not lighter than both. Okay, now very carefully, I'm gonna hit the fur here. And in this case, I do really just wanna hit the fur. If I get like his ears or something, it's not the end of the, not the end of the world. But I wanna mostly stay away from the body. Because what I'm really trying to do here is just pick out the fur. going to go ahead and so you can see how we just picked that fur out. We're going to do the same thing here. Now this guy's, you know, undershaded and that's okay. Again, same thing. Let's get, let get a little more of that. We just want a little slight blue tone to it. Not a lot. Just a little. And that's because light against something that's black and sheen like when you're trying to do black satin, I'll, we have I have a whole video in this series that's going to be all about doing different types of black on leather, on armor, you know, metal black and cloth black and leather black. Those are all different and they all have different looks to them. But black that's satiny has a slight blue tint to it. Okay, it tends to reflect a cold light. So there we go. We got those two. All right, now, what are we going to do? Well, we've got that dark gray, and we've got that, uh, we've got that dark gray wash, and we've got that black ink in our, uh, in our palette here. So let's put those to work. The first thing I'm going to do is get in that dark gray, and I'm just going to go over this whole thing, because remember, we're going for black wolves here. So guess what? Let's get into it gonna slop it all around these guys. I'm not even gonna be picky at this point because this is just the first step of many. Because guess what, by the time we're done, we're gonna have some black wolves here. But the reason we're gonna build this color down through these washes is so we don't lose track 
of these natural highlights and things going on. All of our efforts through undershading and glazing and stuff like that. Okay. Now with this one, I'm just going to go straight into the black ink. We're going to take him down even harder. What I'm going to do, after I slap that all over there, okay, what I'm going to do is quickly wipe my brush, and I'm going to go back over the fur, and I'm going to sop some of that off of there. I'm just going to literally scrape over the fur. In fact, I can even take my dry brush and just kind of work against it some. Now let's go back to the black ink, do the other side. Same thing. Nice heavy coat. This is, we're jumping right in here. And you can see how thick that is now, that black ink. But what I'm going to do, again, as I go against that, I'm going to wipe some of that off the fur. Maybe even a little off the face. Other places I want to stay a little highlighted. Key is that ink doesn't dry immediately. Okay. So, there we go. Make sure both your brushes are cleaned after that because obviously that can be pretty messy. What's our long term plan here? What are we aiming at with these two guys? Well, I'm doing it this direction for a couple reasons. One, if I start from pure black and go up, it's hard, it's really hard to get the color to, first of all, it's hard to make any color show up over, over black and not make it look very chalky. If you think about times you've tried to paint gray or white or something over black, it doesn't work very well. It's always very stark. So it's easier to go down than to come up, okay? So that's why I like, uh, starting from a mid-tone like a gray and then what we do is we just slowly work our way down and we can start focusing this more and more right like I can start to work more black I could leave the fur somewhat gray and I could keep working more blacks more and more blacks here into the skin or into the lower parts of the fur right um, and I can play around with that and through the washes since I'm just bringing things down in tone you don't have any of that stark transition, right? You're not gonna get any of those lines, any of that chalkiness, because the dark color being applied on is gonna be much smoother and tint much easier, and be far less of just like a bam, you know, you can just see it against each other contrast than, uh, than the white or the gray on black, okay? So these are gonna take a little while to dry. I'm gonna let them dry. And when I, and probably what I'll do is I'll actually do a couple layers while I'm off camera. You don't need to see me turn on, put some black on, turn it off. But what I'm going to do is exactly what I said. So I'm going to just kind of focus around, right? With this guy, I'm going to leave a little more on the bottom, focus more of the black on the top. With this guy, exactly the opposite. I'm going to focus down here. I'm just going to work those washes into the, the recesses, into the areas. I'm going to be targeted with my wash, right? So I'll just kind of, I'll do a quick one here on camera before I come back. So like with this one, I want the top to be lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and like, you know, work the wash down like that. And because it's a wash, it's this ink, I can push it around, right? I can wipe my brush and then I can just draw it up in thinner and thinner layers. So again, I don't get any of that starkness to it, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep working it down until in all the shadows I have everything nice and dark where I want it. And then I'm going to only leave just the slightest hint of this gray out here at the very top of the model. And for the other guy, it'll be exactly the opposite. All right. So I'm going to work with those for a little while. Be back in a minute. All right, and we're back. So, uh... 
now in this part where we got the fur or the skin part sort of darkened. So now we just need to talk about how we've darkened that fur. And you can see there, the fur is pretty dark, but it's got that slight blue sheen to it. And that's what we want. If we're just trying to do all black fur, right, then we want to get it up to a dry brush like that. And then we want to take a very thin wash, something I'm going to use my dark gray here. Like I said, you could use your Nolan oil or whatever you want. And then you just want to wash that down. And the reason you want to do that is because you're trying to get just a hint of that sparkle, that sheen of that lighter blue to show through. You don't want to go too high because again, as, as I'm sure you've seen in a hundred painting videos or you've done it yourself, if you over highlight black too much, it just becomes gray. That's all that happens. You're not dealing with black anymore. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this wash and a couple applications of it to create this black in the same way we did on the skin. You can see how that I pushed more into the darker sections and it's just got a slight variation. And that's what we want when we're dealing with sort of black in whatever sense that is, right? We're trying to do like a black wolf here or something. Obviously it's not truly black black, that is to say devoid of other color. Right? You'd have to, it'd have to be, like things in nature just aren't that monochromatic. Um, same thing here, right? But here I'm gonna actually just, again, force it toward the bottom and around my spots. That way again, I can just get the lower parts darkened. Each time I've done this back and forth, what I've done is started again, creating those layers, creating those multiple points of reflection and it just makes it more visually interesting. And again, none of these took a lot of time, right? So there we go. Now what'll happen is that'll dry. I'm gonna leave this one kind of gray and this one will go more or less completely black. All right. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. And uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the rest of them back in. We're gonna summarize while these guys are drying and then we'll talk about them last. That way we don't have to cut again and we can wrap up this marathon of fur painting. Okay, so let's start with our first two here, which are our brown wolves. There we go. So let's bring all of our wolves back in, all of our fur. Okay, so we've got a lot of different kinds of fur here and what's our key? So we've got lots of different, lots of different uh, items going on. Obviously the key is different washes and dry brushes back and forth. Now, if you really wanna take this up to super high level, you can start going in and grabbing individual hairs. Okay, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that technique. Different technique. What we're going for here is like a, just a good tabletop standard to have some, some good looking fur. So what we wanna do there is just back and forth mix our washes and our dry brushes. We want to use some interesting colors like here we mark we a while back we had mixed in some crimson right and that gave us this sort of pseudo red tone in the fur which creates a little more visual interest there as we get to the later stages. All right so we're dry brushing lighter colors whites off whites you know what if it's if it's a brownish model where you were sticking to the ivory tones to the warm whites. We're dry brushing those in, we're washing them down in various ways with sepias, magentas, um, black itself, right? And that's then creating our variation. And we always wanna make sure we've got fur, we've got a nice contrast to our skin in some way or another so it stands apart. That's one of the problems with like the all black wolves, they tend to look very samey. So for our gray and blue, again, same thing, right? We talked about how you can darken something down using successive washes. So like up here, I used almost nothing. Then I put a couple layers of the gray all the way down to the very black. So you can see it creates that natural shadow, right? Here, we did exactly the opposite. We started with blue and then went up to white and then went back in and we used the side of our brush to do kind of a wet brush, right? We were just doing this kind of an action. Just very carefully to pick that out and to get those highlights back in there. Finally, with our black wolves, 
we didn't start black, we started more gray, and we brought them down. Now, if this wasn't black enough, I could keep applying my black ink and I could take it down even farther, right? But obviously I think this is probably as black as you want to go with a living creature for the most part, um, just because otherwise it's going to start looking a bit silly. But here, you know, you just pick it with all these guys, you pick out the teeth, the eyes, you call it a day. So I'm going to throw some photos at the end of all these guys after I do just that. I'll pick out their teeth and eyes real quick so you can see what they look like like that. And uh, on what they won't have their bases or anything, but we'll throw in a photo. So I don't know if I broke this up into parts because this is a very, very long tutorial. Uh, I may have done a broken this out into a part one and part two or something. Uh, we'll see. But at any rate, thank you for watching all of these. And uh, I, I hope that this was helpful on different techniques for fur. It was sort of a mega lesson. Uh, if you liked all of this, uh, you know, please uh, like it, give it a like subscribe uh if you got any questions about other things about fur you know throw them down in the comments or anything questions in general i'm always happy to help and uh until uh as always see you next time